Hello and welcome to Design, Build, Operate. I'm your host, Alex Karim, and in this short video series, we're going to go through how the industrial metaverse and HoloLens 2 is transforming industry today. On tonight's episode, we explore museums and culture. We hear from Florent Gillard, founder and CEO of Saula Studio, who have actively deployed mixed reality in museums all across France. And in Paris, at the end, you put your hand like this and you've got a, a pigeon that has disappeared, the passage and pigeon, coming into your hand, say you goodbye and leave. <laughs> and it's, it's really poetic, you know? We also get a glimpse of what this technology looks like today with the help of Fracture Reality and Mark Knowsley. I'm feeling a connection towards this turtle right now. Uh, it really feels like we are together and I think that's the power of mixed reality at this point. And finally, we hear from two Microsoft MVPs who are already using mixed reality today to preserve cultural heritage. Palmyra, unfortunately, was more or less completely destroyed in the war in Syria, and now we are bringing it back to life with HoloLens. So as I mentioned, today we were talking all about the museums and cultural industry, uh, and we really couldn't talk about that sector without talking about one of our top partners in that space in Saula Studio. So Florent, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. So I think that probably the best thing to do is probably to start with yourself and also to talk about Saula Studio. You know, you've been working with real projects in real museums and cultural heritage. Maybe tell us a little bit about that story. Yeah, so uh, actually at, at the real beginning, I'm a, I'm a video producer, film working for film industry documentaries. And um, so we are, I'm not a tech guy, but um, thanks to one of my friends, Jeremy Frey, he, he got an idea about, um, I'll tell you a bit more later, uh, how we could use augmented reality. So we decided to found the studio. And back in 2020, so it's not uh, so long, uh, we founded Saola Studio uh, in Paris together to try to imagine uh, working in, in storytelling with augmented reality because we really think in, in museums there is a lot of things to be done. I think the, the great thing about you guys is that you are doing it for real, right? And at big scale. And, and one of the coolest projects is obviously the Grand Gallery of Evolution in, in Paris. So you have an amazing kind of uh, teaser video. So maybe let's roll that uh, video and uh, see a little bit more about it. Super cool video, um, gives you a glimpse of what that kind of experience is, bringing back kind of uh, dead or extinct animals back to life or endangered species. Maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and actually that, that's the place, the one you have seen in the video, that uh, founded the studio. Uh, the Jeremy, the, the co-founder I told you about, uh, what they are like, I think four or five years ago with his daughter. And he visits the gallery and, and, and and the daughter, she just wanted to go in the main area with giraffes and lions and, yeah. and big animals. Not being there, it's a bit darker because it's this room is uh, for instinct and, and endangered species. Sure. Uh, but but for him, it was it was pity because he said, okay, there is a lot of story that need to be told there. This, those species have disappeared. They are the last samples we can have. And he said, okay, but now we can imagine bring them to life here to see them with glasses, with augmented reality glasses. And he told me about that. 
And so we said, okay, why not trying to do this? And we wrote to the, the head of the, of the museum and said, oh, we are interesting, why not? And said, okay, so let's do it. Yeah. So we founded the studio. We brought a, a very good team with us, uh, with 3D, with scenographer, a lot of people all together because we really think it's that um, it's a matter of, um, of people doing this kind of experience. And we created Revivre there. So it's a 15 minute experience with groups of people discovering the life of 10, 10 instinct species uh, in yeah, Paris. Super cool. And, and you know, we were talking just before about how many people have actually been through that experience. Can you tell everyone how many people? Yeah, actually, I, I, I think I'm sure about that. We, we, we've got like more than 100,000 visitors there. Crazy. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. In, we opened in June 21. So in about 18 months, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, that's pretty impressive. And, and we discussed that about that, that probably a lot of people have experienced HoloLens yeah, thanks to that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if we think about HoloLens, it's a specialized device, right, for specific use cases. But you're actually democratizing it, using it, scaling it out to hundreds of thousands of people to experience, which is really, really awesome. So I love that. And, and you know, it's not just, you know, the, the gallery of evolution that you've been working with. Obviously, you've been working with, uh, uh, with an aquarium in, in France. Yeah. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that project. Yeah, sure. Well. Uh, so we, we opened Revivre, the, the first one, in June 2021. And in June 22, last year, we opened in Nausicaa. Uh, Nausicaa is the largest aquarium in Europe. It's based north of France. Sure. nearby English coast uh, in Boulogne-sur-Mer and then um, when we discover so in Revive it was a dark place and then we visit Nausicaa and we arrived in this large aquarium with a lot of fishes and beautiful and we said oh we feel like being in the sea in front of that and you say yeah but an aquarium can't have a lot of big specimen big animals that the one living in the open sea that's the reason why we name it Grand Large because we want people to discover yep. uh, all the life of the of the of the fish there and also the scene you can't have in aquarium. So fish, uh, school fish, of course. we sell fish like fishing into the school. So we did our second experience, the name Grand Large. It's included into the price for the entrance. So we we do a lot of people. And I think we, we did like 80,000 more wow. people there. So 180,000 yeah, across exactly. two projects yeah. is pretty crazy. And, and you know, I think that's the, the amazing thing is that, you know, in an aquarium, like you said, it's not logistically possible or humane even to have certain large animals or fast animals like a, you know, a sailfish in a, an aquarium like that. But with mixed reality, you can bring them into the experience, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is that it's interesting also here, I think it's one of the first time we're mixing live, live animals with augmented. It always creates a different experience because at the beginning, the turtle is arriving from the deep of the aquarium and going out of the aquarium. You can't see, you know, the, the, the glass of the aquarium because it's all around. And sometimes at the end, there is a school fish with the, and into the aquarium, we do have uh, the same kind of fishes. And once I did the test and I went like this, I've seen the school and said, is it our 3D or is it the real one? And because it's, they were like at the same time, at the yeah. same moment, and the 3D one just go out. I mean, oh, yeah, came towards and, you. And yeah, I yeah, see yeah. two and said, whoa, <laughs> because it was with reality. And, yeah, and it yeah. was interesting because for people, it's always a bit different. It's coming to life. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's transcending physical and digital. Yeah. To the point where it's almost indiscernible in that yeah. case, right? So it's a bit like yeah. Uh, random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. Yeah, awesome. yeah, it's interesting. And also, we try to create common and synchronized uh, in, yeah. in experience because we really think it's changed everything. When you do um, something technical, yeah. uh, sometimes it's individual. Sure. And which we think is interesting when you tell a story and you can share the story. And we just synchronize really simply with a, a Wi-Fi, mm. the experience with the group. So when you at Revivre au Grand Large doing the experience, your neighbors doing the same experience at the same time. Mm. And so you can discuss about what you see. And even so for moments, we create interaction. For instance, when you go like this into the school of yeah. fish, the school of fish, boom, explodes when you put your for NNS. everyone at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because we we do it for everyone, but 
when they do it, it's individual. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, so we yeah. switch between individual, but you don't know that you do not have to do it. So we try to do it in between. Come on, which create a new reality and also interaction we make yours sure and it's what we try to do and in paris at the end you put your hand like this and you've got a, a pigeon that has disappeared the passage and pigeon coming into your hand say you goodbye and leave <laughs> and it's it's really poetic you know amazing no as, and i think that that comes back to your kind of film and tv background which is kind of like producing experiences right and i think that's amazing and application for this kind of industry and you know we're talking about the industry i mean just before you know we say goodbye it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on how this technology is kind of completely disrupting the industry i think some of the challenges that you, you know previously might have been of experiences at, uh, at museums is retention getting people to really stay longer and experience more assets i feel like as much as anything now it's getting three people through the door and having new experiences to do that yeah yeah i think so I really think they've got amazing collection. Yep. They've got samples, they've got paintings, mm. they've got everything. But now people need something else. Mm. And I think with VR, you create something totally virtual that can be everywhere. But you can't match the reality of seeing a painting, of seeing an animal that have been naturalized like a long time ago. And this is, this is their collection. And bringing back attention, bringing back storytelling, bringing back like something new and fun, mm. bring back new people. And in Paris, uh, they did a survey uh, for the last summer. So Revive was open and they've got amazing results because you've got new audience. They've got younger people between 18 and 25, people that never go into that kind of museum because usually it's when you've got kids who go there. Yeah. And they, they bring people there because it's technological, but it's also for family. I, I like the first group ever that did the experience when it opened after the, the test. It was two grandparents and two, two, grand, uh, two children. And it was so nice to see the two grandparents like 70 and, yeah, and yeah. seven to 10 years old. All experiencing all experience. it together. Yeah. And, and I say, okay, put. And it was so simple because you just see something, you see arrow on the floor to go on the next next step. For them, it was oh, okay. Uh, don't care about the technology, <laughs> and it works well. Yeah, so and it I blends think... physical and digital. I think that's the key thing, and it's it's a, it's a new way of interacting with the data. And, and, and you know, we talk about these collections, like you said, the that they have the collection they already. It. Yeah, and it's, this is augmenting it. it. It's not replacing it. It's adding not new data. Yeah, it's telling. Everything. It's like when you visit a museum with someone passionate that can tell you all the of stories. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same. If you're alone in a museum, sometimes you're a bit you lost. You don't know the context. Not yeah, interesting yeah. and you're yeah. going. This is like a super guide or, or telling a story that brings you something else, something you can't have in the place and that highlight and augmented everything. And I think for cultural sites, there's so many things that, that could be done. Not replacing, adding. Amazing. Florent, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Alex. So we've got a sense of the industry, but what I wanted to do is to do an immersive showcase to show what this technology looks like today. And to help me do that, I've got Mark Knowles-Lee from Fracture Reality. Mark, great to have you back. Maybe you could tell us a bit about Fracture and the Join XR platform. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, well, so Fracture is uh, based down in Brighton on the south coast. Uh, we're very proud to be Microsoft Gold Partners. We've worked on the HoloLens for six or seven years now. And our Join XR platform, put simply, it's a bit like Teams and PowerPoint, but for your HoloLens, real kind of productivity workhorse. And it works by letting you upload you know, 3D models from all kinds of sources, CAD, BIM, CT scans, beautifully created models by artists, compose them into structured presentations along with all your other media. And it's plug and play, so you can just get started really quickly. Awesome, well, let's load up our first piece of content. Wow, uh, we've got an actual uh, sea turtle here in the room with us. Mark, maybe you could tell us a bit about Terry the turtle. Uh, sure. Actually, Terry, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's, a, it's a female, it's a green oh, sea wow, turtle, sorry. Alex, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so obviously it's a lovely model here. Now, unfortunately, green sea turtles are endangered. Oh, wow. Moment. There's about 85 to 90,000 uh, nesting females left. And I'll, I'll bring up a little more information in a minute to sort of show you where they live and a bit more about them. If we take a look around, it's literally like, you know, she's in the room with us swimming wow. along, which is quite an amazing experience. Really. Absolutely. Blending so, physical and digital. Now, this is a fully digital model, right? That's been represented to yeah. create, uh, you know, a seat. Right? Yeah, so that there are many ways of creating this kind of content, uh, sort of 3D game. 
uh, production techniques are, sure. qu are quite quite used, but we'll show some other types of content shortly. Um, but really, the point here, I think, is is to give the visitor the experience, mm. uh, you know, to engage them, um, and then once people are fully engaged, you can bring in, you know, rich body of information to tell them a bit more about, you know, the life of the turtles, uh, where they live, their diet, all sorts of things like that. So if you look up there, you can see highlighted in red on the world. Uh, with the key nesting sites, sure. so, you know, from, from the sort of Pacific all the way through to Florida and the Bahamas, um, are where they, where they currently nest. Um, historically, they've been hunted uh, for their meat, their fat, and their eggs. But obviously, wow. those days are gone now, and it's much more about conservation. Um, and nesting populations are starting to make a comeback. So, you know, it's a it's good news if we keep going in that direction. Fantastic, super amazing way to showcase you know, uh, you know uh, a really important topic, right? Around endangered species and things like that. I'm feeling a connection towards this turtle right now. Uh, it really feels like we are together. And I think that's the power of mixed reality at this point. Yeah, I mean, it is, you know, it is quite incredible when you get up close to her, the level of detail, the, the believability. It's almost like she's looking at me. And, and Absolutely, kind of, yeah. Amazing. So, should we move on? Yeah, let's um, do that. Okay, I'm gonna show you uh, a, quite a different uh, sort of example now um, of a piece of content. So this is the, the jawbone um, of, a, of a fossil. Uh, it's a CT scan, so right. it's like a very accurate scan. Um, and I'm just going to pick it up and show you that we can, you know, take a really good detailed look at this. Wow. Uh, so this is called a, a trichodon, this, this mammal. And these were around just as the dinosaurs were kind of leaving the stage and sure. the small mammals were around. And the three little prongs on the teeth is wow, where they get yeah. the name Trichodon. Um, and in fact, I think in the 1850s, the, um, they discovered that the morphology of these teeth was changing. And in fact, this led this to being classified as a new species of Trichodon. Wow. Um, so, you know, super engaging way for researchers to collaborate. I can just imagine paleontologists looking at that rich body of information that they had and bringing it in digitally. Quite amazing. And this is actually from a, a public repository, right? That's right, yeah. It's called um, Morphosource. What I'm going to do now, though, is, is, is ask a colleague to join us uh, from another museum. Uh, so, Meili, if you'd like to, to come and join us, yeah. just to show that although you know we're together in the same room, we can be working with people from anywhere in the world. So, Meili, do you just want to point out the, the trichodon's various teeth? Um, Pretty amazing, and like you know, we're both physically in the same room, but we don't have to be. Right? We can actually bring in digital participants to uh, to the meeting to collaborate. Yeah. So paleontologists worldwide can use platforms like this to collaborate. Absolutely, you know, really, distance is no longer an issue. We can be working with a team globally uh, just as easily as as if we were in the same room. Thanks, Mealy. <laughs> See you later. Cheers. Thanks again, Mark. So we heard from Florent Gillard to see how the French museum sector is adopting this technology. And we got a glimpse of what this looks like today with Mark Knowles Lee from Fracture Reality. Well, what I wanted to do next was hear from two Microsoft MVPs. And to start, let's hear from Zaid Zayem. So Zaid, thanks so much for being here. And maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I came to, to Germany in 2013. I'm originally from, from Syria, from Damascus. Um, and I came to, to Germany because, mainly because of the war uh, that is happening in, in my country. I came here with a big passion for technology. I visited a tech school in Berlin called Ready School of Digital Integration. I had the opportunity to meet amazing people from Microsoft who are teachers and mentors who introduced me over the last few years into the mixed reality space, to the playground, <laughs> uh, through various activities, hackathons, meetups, um, conferences. Um, you name it. And here I discovered like a big passion on my end for, for this field and started like growing, trying to, to find maximum ways how to grow my skills in this field. This is how I got into, into mixed reality and started then giving something back to the community in workshops, uh, talks. Um, yeah. And tell us, uh, you know, um, obviously Syria um, and also mixed reality, how do the two combine? I know you've been working on this mixed reality for cultural heritage project. Maybe you could tell us a bit about that project. As mentioned, the, the project, um, I started it in, in late 2019 as a community project where I, yeah, invited multiple contributors, tech interested people, people who are interested in, in mixed reality, who, yeah, passionate started supporting me shaping this uh, project how all how everything started basically is that um, given the fact that I'm I'm from Syria um, I had uh, the opportunity in 2007 
to to visit Palmyra with my with my family, and um, this is one of the important memories I had the opportunity to to bring with me here um, to Germany. And then after learning potential that could be driven with mixed reality and technologies like the Hololens, I realized how basically I can merge these two passions, like the the rich history that my 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 culture provide and uh, the, the technology that Microsoft and Mixed Reality in HoloLens offers. So merging these two pillars uh, came then with the, with, the, with, the, with the project Mixed Reality for Cultural Heritage with the, with the main core idea that allows us to preserve uh, endangered um, yeah, sites uh, using Mixed Reality, reconstruct, reconstructing them virtually and making them a tangible experience for a wide audience. So let's imagine we wear the HoloLens uh, and we as uh, users, we can uh, see the monuments first, like let's say the, the Ark of Triumph. So we, we can see the monument first uh, destroyed. And then as a user, like thanks to the, to the hand tracking technology that the, the HoloLens has, we can actively involve the user in reconstructing, rebuilding the monument actively. And Palmyra, unfortunately, was more or less completely destroyed in the war in Syria, and now we are bringing it back to life with HoloLens. Thanks, Zaid. See you soon. Thank you so much for, for having me. So we just heard from one Microsoft MVP and now over to another in uh, Rami uh, Hamadi uh, from the University of Essex. So Rami, thanks so much for being here. Maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks for having me, Alex. My name is Rami Hamadi. I'm working as assistant professor in the University of Essex, and I'm actually one of the people who used to work with Mixtrality in HoloLens since 2016, since the device is actually released. Maybe tell us a little bit about that Egyptian museum project. So since COVID and post-COVID, actually people attracted to the virtual museum and this is not actually helping because they are not taking the actual uh, experience they are aiming for. But now with this kind of technologies, we can actually bring another layer of engagement because people doesn't go there and just look at the pieces and that's it. They need to live in the history. They need to see some kind of holograms and interactions and engage with another layer of information. So whenever you arrive to the new museum, you can find the king is rising and taking you in a tour with different stations. Every station is just part of his life. While you can walk, you can see some war scenes, uh, how the king ruled the country. You can see gods flying everywhere, like stuff like that. And then the other side of the application is the item exploration. So whenever you arrive to one of the authentic pieces, you can actually stand there, you can find the King Rises, start to speak about his piece. And then while you're doing that, you can play with it, then get information around it. You can see images, you can see videos while the King is talking. So literally the King work as a virtual guide while you can see and interact with the interesting stuff. So the idea was to expand the entire time that people actually spend there. So the time wasn't actually the double or treble, it was even more. So from 7 seconds to around 5 minutes, you know, whenever people just go around and look at view stuff, you know, and leave it, there is no impact actually in there. But with wearing these kind of devices and inter interacting with these kind of, you know, uh, virtual pieces, that would actually have another layer of information, make people much happier and engaging more with the uh, museum context. Thanks, Rami. See you soon. Thank you, Alex Norris. See ya. Thanks for watching this episode of Design, Build, Operate. To catch other episodes, be sure to check out the Microsoft HoloLens YouTube channel. But there's some more really awesome content coming. And so, Offman, tell us all about it. Thanks, Alex. I'm here in Paris, getting ready for the Olo show. Indeed, we have worked on something really cool in this spectacular studio, specially designed for this unique occasion. Come have a look. We have the curtain, the band, and obviously the desk. Very soon, I will have sitting on my couch a very special guest flying to us from sunny Barcelona. Right now, I can't tell you more, but trust me, it will be really worth the wait. I can't wait to be there.